Rajampat Kitavayar was the only son of his father. Father Akhanda acquired rights to many acres of Nancy land and village municipality work which he had sought on the banks of the Kaveri. Fertile earth, if you put gold, you can get gold. However, they cultivated samba paddy, cattle banana, betel nut, sugar cane, etc., which are better than gold, without putting gold on that land. Both his sisters got married during his father's time. So after he became the head of the family, there was no big cost to the family. However, his wealth did not improve after his father's time as he spent liberally on charity and public works, helping his friends and educating his children. Daughter Lalita alone was growing at the rate of one year per year. Must have got married last year. The reason why Kitavayar did not put much effort into Lalitha's marriage last year was because he had to travel to Bombay as part of a family affair. One of Kitavayar's sisters was his elder. Amal was married in a nearby village into a Vedic family. Kitavayar's younger sister Rajamo was in Bombay. She was very much entitled to Rajam Kitavayar's request at a young age. The excitement and pride that Kitavayar showed during her wedding was beyond measure. He has praised the groom who married Raj as lucky several times. But the kingdom's fortunes were not so good due to the divine will that no one could know. Soon after the marriage, the groom Dura Isami got a good job in the railway office in Bombay. After some time, Rajam went to Bombay. It soon became clear that Raj's home life was not so pleasant. But the details are not known. Rajamal, who is highly emotional, does not want to go public with her troubles. Couldn't there be frequent traffic between Bombay and Rajampat? Eventually even the correspondence stopped. Sometimes Kitavayar asked, how is Raja? He would long for that. Then tears will fall in his eyes. Wiping his eyes, he said, such is her fate. Thinking that he would let out a sigh and go about his business. In this situation, a year ago a letter came from Raja, it was a warm letter. Rajam had written that no matter how patiently she endured hardships for so many years, her heartache was not over. She was asking Tom Ian to come and see her as soon as possible as her condition was getting worse. She also wrote, Manny and Lalitha should be brought when they come. Siddha is dying to see her aunt. Kitavayar does not want to take his wife to Bombay. But Saraswati Amma's mood was the opposite. She was adamant about going to Bombay with Lalita. Apart from going on a pilgrimage to Tirupati to beautify the children, the mother never traveled much. There was no desire to travel. But now she was furious about going to Bombay. The reason was that Lalita was 14 years old. If you go to four places and you will get a good groom? What if you sit at this bar? She said to herself. So the kid of Ayar family went to Bombay. Saraswati Amal, Lalita, and Lalita's younger brother Sundu had also gone and the journey was very exciting. Dura Isami Iyer arrived at the station and took them to his place in Dadar. Lalita and Sundu were very happy during their stay in Bombay. Lalita and Siddha, who was one year older than her, became Pranas and Eghidas. They shook hands and swore never to forget each other. Siddha takes immense pride in showing Lalita and Sundu all the sights of Bombay, unspeakable excitement. Be it a zoo, a museum, a railway station, a Taj Mahal hotel, an eight-storied mansion, a Machut garden in the Malabar Hills, Lalita would stand in awe of what she saw. Siddha, often said, way here. Walk this. If you stand looking at this, they will taunt you as a wretch. Run, wither. Run. She will hurry that, she grabs the hand and pulls, she grabs his back and pushes him, see. Assad. Sometimes she would say that. But Lalita did not mind all this. Lalita was always excited during her stay in Bombay despite her immense love for Siddha and her gratitude that she was seeing all these Bombay sights. Never before had she been so happy. But Kitavayar and his wife Saraswati Amma had, for different reasons, attained the opposite state of mind to Lalitha. Kitavayar learned that Raja's life was full of disappointment and heartache. 
but he could not clearly discern the reasons for it. During their stay in Bombay, Dura Isami rarely came home. Whenever he came, he spoke respectfully with a smile on his face. He often does not come home at night saying that he has DUT. Kitavayar tried to understand the hardships of the kingdom. It was obvious that there was a shortage of money. There is no ornament other than the thyramangalium hanging on a yellow rope around the Raja's neck. Rajam was not as emaciated and bedridden as Kitavayar had expected. She was actively walking. When Kitavayar asked Raja, she said, I am not sick, brother. I wanted to see you all. That is why I wrote like that. Kitavayar was not fooled by this and tried to find out the truth by asking more and more questions. Why, mother, Rajam? Does your inmate have any bad habits? Drink, get. Drink, there's still horse racing, bro. Why do you make my stomach churn by hearing all that? After saying that, she burst into tears. Little by little, Kitavayar informed her of all the details. Kitavayar inferred from Raja's clichés that Dura Isami was involved in sexual affairs as well as gambling. But he stopped because he thought it would be too boring to ask his sister about it. On seeing the love and sympathy shown by Kitavayar towards the suffering Raja, Saraswati Amma started to feel enmity. Saraswati Amma would come looking for her whenever he would talk to her alone to find out about Raja's problems. Saresu. You go. If, secret what secret? Good shame. She said and went back with her cheek on her shoulder. That Brahmin Paramasadhu. Golden Rod, he looks like a Maharaja. It is this Dujari who has ruined the drunkenness like this. She murmured. Saraswati was enraged to see Siddha, Raja's daughter, redder and fairer than her daughter Lalita. Siddha's lively talk and laughter made her hostile. Lalita always follows Siddha and she says, See. Bodhi. Vati. Saraswati Amal did not like it at all. Rajam knew the situation somehow and pacified Mani as much as possible with her kind words and courtesy. She often warned Sitten not to exert too much power over Lalita. Saraswati Amma's mind was not calmed by all this. Lalita Sita often compared their appearance in her mind. Lalita is beautiful, Sita's mane was white with sandalwood. Those who know the symbol of Samudraka may say that Lalita is more beautiful than Sita. But to a superficial observer, Sita appears to be the prettier of the two. Lalita's eyes were elongated and meek and resembled the shape of a lotus petal. Siddha's eyes were wide and round in shape with Kumuta flower. Siddha was born and brought up in the civilization of Bombay. Lalita was from Patakot. Their manners and manners were set accordingly. A single curly lash hanging from Siddha's ear is enough to establish her facial charm. Don't even ask about her speaking skills. She is pouring out words in a lively manner. Before Lalita could say a word, Siddha would say ten words. She studied in the convent school hall and while talking she suddenly startled Lalita by singing an English song. Moreover Siddha is one year older than Lalita. So the youth of youth had begun to shine upon her. Analyzing all this, Saraswati Amma could not decide that Siddha was more attractive than Lalita. Her heart only realized that her Nathan's daughter was more beautiful than her daughter on the whole. Due to this, the nature of that mother has changed. Rajampat Postmaster Bangaranadu's impression about Saraswati Amma was true till a year ago. Ever since her return to Bombay, Saraswati Amma's natural temper was increasing. Lalita's beatings and scoldings are incalculable more than before in beautifying and beautifying her. Moreover, if Lalita takes away Siddha's speech, then the house will be empty. Lalita was the only one who did not come to her senses even after being slapped on the head several times. Aunt Siddha would not sleep that night unless she had something to brag about to someone, even if she sleeps like that, she ends up telling the women of Agra Karat something about her Bombay aunt in her dreams.